In Lightburn, there are a few ways to define how you would like to run a job in relation to the coordinates of your design in your workspace and the location of your laser head. These methods are absolute coordinates, current position, and user origin. The best option to use can vary by job, and it's important to understand how each works to ensure the success of your job and its expected output. In this video, we'll go through each of these modes, covering what they are, how they work, and how to set up each one in Lightburn, as well as on your laser. Timestamps will be in the description so that you can jump to a specific mode if needed. Before we get started, let's enable the fire button. This will allow us to turn the laser beam on or off from within Lightburn, which will be useful when we're aligning and framing our project. To do this, we'll head up to the device settings, which is the wrench icon in the top toolbar. In the device settings window, you'll find this under other options. You will want to make sure the enable laser fire button is enabled. And starting with Lightburn 1.1.00, there is an additional option to have the laser on by default when framing that you can optionally enable. For this to take effect, you will first need to restart Lightburn. Upon restarting, if you head over to the move window, you'll now see a fire button and a power text box. I typically set this to the lowest value I can that will still allow my laser to fire, which is often one to 2%. Now, when we click the fire button, the laser will turn on, and when we click it again, it will turn off. Additionally, depending on the setting you chose, the laser will also be on by default when framing, or you can hold down the shift key when clicking frame to run the frame command with the laser on. The first method we are going to look at is absolute coordinates. This is by far the most commonly used and easiest to understand when starting out. From our official documentation, it is described as the page grid you see in the main editing window represents your machine's work area. Anything you place in that area will be cut in the corresponding place on your machine. With this method, you can expect that if your design is in the middle of your workspace, it will be engraved in the middle of your machine's work area. Anywhere you place a design in Lightburn's workspace is exactly where it will run in your machine's work area. In Lightburn, the green square on your workspace represents your job origin, and the red square represents the machine origin. When running in absolute coordinates mode, these two squares will always be in the same place. Next, we will take a look at setting up and running absolute coordinates on a machine with limit switches as well as a machine without them. Starting off with limit switches, we're going to use the Orter Laser Master 2 Pro. This machine automatically homes to the front left when it's first powered on, which it is able to do because it has those limit switches. We recently released a video on getting the Orter Laser Master 2 Pro set up with Lightburn, and in that video, we enabled auto homing on startup. This is only available on a machine like this one that has limit switches, and it ensures that every time you run Lightburn, the head of the laser will start in the very front left, which is its origin. This makes using absolute coordinates very simple, as all that we need to do is select absolute coordinates in the laser window, and we're ready to run our job. Next, we'll take a look at the Sculptfun S9. This machine does not come with limit switches, but can still be run in absolute coordinates. The key difference is that before you power on the machine, you'll need to physically move the head of the laser to the front left corner using your hand, butting it up against the frame. On a machine without limit switches, the location the head of the laser is when powered on becomes its origin, which is why we need it to be there before switching the power on. We did also do a setup video for the S9, and the auto home on startup must be disabled for a machine without limit switches, or it will crash the head of the laser into the frame, since it doesn't know where home is. Once you've moved the head of the laser to the origin, which is typically the front left on G-code machines, and powered it on, all that's left to do is make sure you select absolute coordinates in the laser window and you are ready to start your job. Next, we'll look at how to use current position. With current position, your job cuts relative to the current position of the laser head when you hit the start button. In this mode, you'll use the job origin grid within the laser window to tell Lightburn how to position the job relative to the laser. For example, if you place the head of the laser on the bottom left of your workpiece, you'll want to make sure you have the bottom left selected in the job origin grid. Similarly, if you have the laser head centered on your workpiece, you'll also need to make sure that you have the center selected in that job origin grid. 
I like to use current position for objects that I want to engrave in the very center, like coasters, where aligning the design might be more difficult. I find it easiest to make a small mark using a pencil in the very center of my object to really help with speeding up the alignment process. Then, turning the laser on, I can quickly align the beam with the mark before hitting start. This is a great way to ensure that the engraving will be perfectly centered with your workpiece. The third mode is user origin, which works very similarly to the previous current position mode. The key difference is that in current position, the location of the laser head is where the job starts from, while in user origin, you'll need to define the origin location. On some larger DSP machines like Ruida based systems, there's an origin button on the controller panel that can be used. On G code machines like the diode lasers we are using, this will need to be set within Lightburn. To do this, we'll need to use the move window to jog the laser head over to its starting location. When we're happy with its positioning, we will need to select the set origin button to apply that new origin. Lastly, we will want to double check in our laser window that we have set the job origin correctly in the grid. The grid option needs to match the location that we just set the new origin to. For example, if we jogged our laser to the top left of our workpiece and clicked set origin, the grid option for top left would also need to be selected. Once you have set the origin, you can jog the laser head around, knowing it will return to that origin position when you start your job or select go to origin in the laser window. This has been how to use the three different start from methods within Lightburn. You should now have a much better understanding of what the different modes are and how to set up your jobs correctly for each of them. Links will be in the description of this video over to our official Lightburn documentation covering each of these modes. Be sure to check out our Lightburn tutorial playlist on YouTube for many more guides covering the tools and design features within Lightburn.